the supreme of all spiritual practices. Sankirtan, the chanting of the holy names. So in the Vishnu Rahasya it is stated, Yad abhyarcha harin bhaktya kritei kratu shata api phalam prabnoti avikalam kalau govinda kirtanat. Whatever fruit, whatever result can be attained in Satya Yuga by very intensely performing austerities for hundreds of years that can be attained in this age of Kali simply by chanting the name of Govind. Govind Jai Jai Gopal Jai sinful person can sin again and again and again his whole life but still he cannot commit so many sins that just one name Hari will completely destroy don't doubt it I can hear someone's mind now whispering <laughs> don't think I cannot hear your mind Some have doubts. Don't have any doubts. The name is so powerful. Like Ajamil. He killed people. He stole. He burned their houses. He was very, very sinful. He neglected to take care of his old parents. He did all types of sins. But all of his sins passed present and future, even the future one, were destroyed by saying the name of the Supreme Lord, only once, Narayana. And it was not the name that he chanted at the last moment when he was about to uh, pass away. No, when his child was born and he gave the name, your name is Narayana, that first name destroyed all his sins, past, present and future. Now one may say, but after that he continued to do sinful activities. So that's the sign that his sinful karma was not destroyed. Why? Because why do we do the materialistic or sinful activities? Because we are under the control of our past karma. And that is uh, impelling us, or rather, does not exactly impel. Only the samskars, the impressions of the past sins come in the mind. If you have uh, engaged in some 
worldly enjoyment. This made an impression, samskar, impression in your subconscious mind. And now when you get the chance, a situation that is similar to that situation, then that samskar comes out. And in your mind you start to relive, oh, I enjoyed this before. And you feel, I have to enjoy it again. But you should understand that this sanskar is not pushing you. Because a sanskar is only like a picture. It's a photograph. So, if someone shows you a photograph of you eating the hamburger, <laughs> then it will not make you eat a hamburger. Then why do we feel as if by force? Arjuna asked this question to Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. By what is one impelled to act against one's own will even, as if by force, in activities that you don't want to do even? That is the, the path of spiritual life in the beginning is a struggle. You know, you want to do this, but your mind is telling you to do that. And inside the conflict is going on. So what is going on? Arjuna is asking this question in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 3. And his question is essentially this. Paramatma is in the heart. Now Paramatma is not going to force you or inspire you to do something sinful. And in your mind, impressions are coming, but they're only pictures. Mental images. So they also cannot force you. So what is forcing us? So Arjun, uh, Krishna gave the answer to Arjun's question. Kama Esha, Krodha Esha, Raja Guna Sumut Bhava, Mahashano Mahapapa Vidinam Ayavarinam. Arjun, in this world, you have an enemy. And it's not that army on the other side of the battlefield. Everyone thinks Arjun's on this side and the enemies are on that side. Krishna's not saying this. No. Because afterwards, Arjun will see the darshan of the Viratrup, the universal form of Krishna. And Arjun will realize, Oh Krishna, you are everything. You yourself are all the people on all the sides. So the enemy is not someone else. Enemy is only calm, lust. Rajaguna Smat Bhava. It is coming from the mode of passion. When Rajagun is disturbing our chitta, our consciousness, then we identify with whatever vritti is there. Vritti Sarupram Itaraptra. The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali said, if your mind is peaceful, then you can understand I am the soul. But if your mind is oscillating, modifying, turbulent, there is disequilibrium of your consciousness, then you will identify with whatever is there. So when that picture comes in your mind, you say, oh, that's me. I have to now do this activity. So the impression is not forcing you, but the ignorance by which you identify with it. So, here the question is, if the sins of Ajamil have all been destroyed, then why is he still engaging in sinful activities. And the answer is that his sins have been destroyed just like if you have a rope, it's in a coil and you put gasoline on it and set fire to it. Then it burns completely and when the fire goes out, you can see that black rope is there. But if you try to bind anything with a rope, it crumbles to dust. It has no substance. Only a shape is there. So in the same way, if someone chants the holy name without offense even once, then all their impressions are there, but those impressions cannot bind them. They will
will not make them take bars again and again and again. Uh, this is why, at the last moment of his life, when the Yamadutas came to take away Ajamil, the Vishnu Dutas quickly came there and said, What injustice is this? That a completely innocent man is about to be punished. The Yamadutta said, what do you mean completely innocent man? We have all the records. Chitra Gupta in Yamaraji's accountant's department and his assistant, they write down everything that you do. We have all the records. But the Vishnu Dutta said, no. He's completely free from all sins because of the first name, Narayana. So the light of Namabas removes the essence. There's no substance anymore in those sins, those impressions. And the person, they may continue to sin due to Purvabhyas. Purvabhyas means just past habits. But those sins they are doing, they don't make any future reactions. Name is so powerful. Just like if there's a cobra, if you try to approach the cobra, it will like this and spread its hood. And if you come too close, it will go to bite. But if you remove the fangs, the poisonous fangs of the cobra, then when you go near him, he'll still go. <laughs> he'll still do it. He cannot bite you, he cannot kill you. But it's just what? Purvabhyas means previous habit. <laughs> His previous habit. <laughs> so for this reason also, don't judge devotees and criticize them in any way. Because they may have some bad habit for now, but do not bind them. And in the future, very soon, all their bad habits will completely go away and then their inner purity will be manifest. So, Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is quoting this verse that by chanting the holy name more sins than it's possible to commit are completely destroyed. Don't have any doubt about it. Then, next verse. Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is quoting the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Akatschit Svaranam Vishnur Baya Vyase Nasajate Ostas Pandanamatrena Kirtanam Tu Tato Baram. The meaning is that by doing Smaran of Vishnu, by remembering Vishnu, sins are destroyed, karma is destroyed with great effort. But by chanting his name, all the sins are very, very easily destroyed. This kirtan is performed simply by using the lips, moving the lips. Ostas pandanamatrena kirtanam tutatobaram. Therefore, kirtan is far superior to smaranam. So right from the beginning of Bhajan Rahasya Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is establishing this point. What is superior? Silent meditation or chanting the holy name? In the uh, 12th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is mention that by chanting the holy name, one gets the Param Shanti, Supreme Peace. And here peace means Prem. Only one who has love is peaceful. Krishna Bhakta Nishkam Etaeva Shanta Mukti Bukhi Siddhikami Sakili Ashanta Because a devotee doesn't want anything for himself. Devotee just wants to please Krishna. So whatever happens to him is not relevant. If someone
some problem comes in your life, then what? It's a very big thing. Oh. But you will notice that it's not on the front page of the news. Not today, not tomorrow, never. <laughs> But the devotee, whatever problems come in his life, he never is disturbed at all. Why? Because he doesn't want anything. He wants to only please Krishna. And you can please Krishna very easily, anytime. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, Yome, Bhakta, Prayatati, Tanayam, Bhakta, Paritam, Ashnami, Prayatatmana, Krishna. Just give me a flower. Very easy. With love. Oh, Krishna, this is what Krishna is happy. It's very easy. And if Krishna is happy, then you are automatically overjoyed. So the devotee is peaceful. And all others, Bhukti, Mukti, Siddhikani, Sakli, Ashanta, those who want sense gratification, they're always disturbed by desire. Those who want uh, Siddhi, Yoga powers, they're always, when will I have my yoga powers? And then when they use them, they run out. <laughs> and the mukti, those who want liberation, they're all, they're not peaceful. So devotee is peaceful, and the highest peace is prayer. Loka doyat swajanata parato sotuba prana priyadapi Sumer Somas Jadisyuhu Kleshastata Pyalipati Bali Sahasa Vijitya Premae Vatan Hariban Ivo Pushtimeti. Radharani herself said this. Said Love is like a lion. Just as a lion, when it meets its prey, it attacks the prey and by Eating the prey becomes stronger. So in the same way, for someone who has prey, then all problems are just like prey. Whatever difficulties come. What kind of difficulties? Loka doyat. Difficulties in two worlds. Difficulties in this life and the next life. Or from the other locus, the devatas, even if the devatas give you problems. Then, no problem at all. Loka doyat. So, Janata, if problems are made by your own family members, Parato, or others, outsiders, Otoba, or Prana Priyat, this is very important. Radharani is saying Prana Priyat. Even if the problem is caused by my Prad Krishna. That means I want to serve him. I want to please him. But his, Krishna himself is so problematic. <laughs> I have made all beautiful arrangements to receive him. Why did he go to the tasteless Kunj of Chandravali? So sometimes Krishna makes problems also for Radharani. <laughs> but even when Krishna makes problems for Radharani, those problems, her love is like a lion and increases her love. The more Krishna is does the wrong things, the more Krishna goes against her even. He's like that sometimes. But she's very humble and proud at the same time. Very, very humble, but proud also. Oh, you can treat me however you want, but I'll never be indifferent to you. Asnishyava padaratam penashtumam adarshanam mamahatam karutuva yathata dava vidhata lambatom at prana tastu saiva napara. You can embrace me. Oh, you can neglect me and break my heart. You can do as you like. But still, you are my prayer. You are my life and soul and there is no one else. So, in love there is peace. It is invincible. 
It is unimpeachable. Nothing can check it. So, this prayer comes from Harina. So, when Srimad Bhagavatam he said, the peace, the, the, the samadhi, the trance that comes from chanting Harina is superior to the trance of the sages, the rishis of Satya Yuga. They also meditate for thousands of years. They are very qualified and they go into deep samadhi. But their samadhi is not so deep as the person who chants Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, don't think that the chanting of the Holy Name is the best practice only for Kali Yuga. It's the best practice for all the Yugas. Even in Satya Yuga, Kirtan, chanting was the best practice. And in Kali Yuga, it's the only practice because no one's qualified to do anything else. So, you, you are, we are all very lucky in Kali Yuga because the only thing that's possible for us to do just happens to be also be the best thing to do. So Srila Jiva Goswami Pad raised the question, if Kirtan is the best, then why didn't the Supreme Lord preach the Dharma of Kirtan in Satya Yuga? And he gave the answer is that the people there are so qualified that they, they can do meditation. They can sit and concentrate for years without disturbance. They can do that. And because they are very qualified, they don't, they cannot put faith in a practice which is so simple. You see, this is what this verse is saying from Hari Bhakti Vilas, text 5 of Bhajana Hasya. Ostas Pandana Matrena, just move your lips. Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hari Hari. Ram Ram Ram. And just move the lips. Ostas Pandana Matrena. And you accomplish this anger of Bhakti. So in Satya Yuga, they cannot believe that something so simple can give such a high result. Because usually in life, if you do a low effort, you get low results. If you do a high effort, you get a big result. So they cannot put their faith. Low effort, big result. <laughs> How can it be true? But the people of Kali Yuga, they have no other option. Their minds are disturbed, their lives are disturbed all the time by many things. So they have to take to Sankirtan. So in that sense, they are the most fortunate. And especially in this Kali Yuga when Mahaprabhu has appeared, all the demigods on the higher planets, they are praying to take birth as human beings on earth. So remember that. When you're sitting in your tent in the wet rain and it's cold, what am I doing here? Just know that somewhere there's a demigod in heaven, in like seven star heavenly place. Eh? And he's praying, I wish I knew you. <laughs> that I could be here on earth in Kali Yuga with the Vaishnavas dancing in Kirtan. Oh. So Ostaspandana Matrena Kirtanam Tatobaram Kirtan is better than uh, Smaran and the reason is because uh, it is very easily attained and also Smaran is the side effect, the byproduct of Kirtan. The residents of Vaikuntha, they told Gop Kumar, that when you chant, then the mind is automatically engaged. Why? Because this Nam Prabhu is Aprakrita Pran in the form of supernatural Pran. And when this Pran appears, it goes through the mental platform first and takes.
takes control of the mind before it manifests from your mouth. And then it goes in your ears and goes back and then again. So the, the chanting automatically controls the mind. So then in the next verse, text 6, Jaina Janma Shastat Purvam Pasudeva Samachita Tanmukhe Harinamani Sadati Stanti Bharata. O best of the dynasty of Bharat, the holy name of Hari is always present only in the mouth of one who has done archan, who has done the puja to the deity of Vasudev, Krishna, perfectly for 100 lifetimes. So, sometimes a person is very into uh, the ritualistic worship of the deity but not so much into kirtan. But if they'll do that ritualistic worship for a hundred lifetimes, then they may start to chant. So you chant now. So what you can see here is that at the beginning of Bhajan Rahasya, Srila Bhakti Thakur is giving evidence from all over the scripture about the glories of the Holy Name. This is the first step in our spiritual life to hear the astonishing, unlimited, inconceivable glories of Nam Prabhu. The Nam is Krishna Himself, non different. As Krishna is all powerful, all merciful, all beautiful, all powerful, so Krishna Nam is same, no difference at all. Except for one difference. Vacham, vachakam, ichideti bhavato, nama surupa dvayam, purvasman parame vantakaranam tatra pi janimahi, yastasmin vihita paradani vaha prani samantaj bavet, asini danu pasasupi, hi sadanandam udo vachjati. It means that the Supreme Lord has two swaroops. Vacha, his own form, which is referred to by the name, and Vachakam, the name itself. But of these two, the name, they are the same, but the name is more merciful than his Swarup. Why? Because if you are serving the deity, and you make some offense, then you will not get mercy from the deity. But, if you are chanting the name of Krishna, the name of Krishna will destroy even the reactions for any offenses that you have done to the vigor of Krishna. And then turn you upside down with your feet on the top and head at the bottom and throw you head first into the ocean of rasa. Completely immersed in transcendental ocean of praise. So Krishna and his name, they're non-different. But now, more merciful than Krishna. So this is the first thing. We want to serve Krishna. But how will you serve him if you cannot see him? What do we do? Where is he? But if you serve Krishna's name, then Krishna will come to you and say, Oh, how can I serve you? Krishna want to serve you. So, everything begins with Nam. Don't go around this. Speculating, imagining, visualizing. Serve Nam. So now, this evening, I just want to give you a clear picture, so it's fixed in your mind, of the structure of Bhajan Rahasya. Do you have the map? Or is it stuck in? Is it stuck? Or is it detached? Oh. Uh, thank you. So in my Gurudev's edition of Bhajan Rahasya, you get this. So this gives us the overall structure of the book, Bhajan Rahasya. And basically, it 
it's describing that the Hare Krishna Mahamantra has 32 syllables. It has 16 names, each of two syllables each, Hare Krishna. And these 16 names are in pairs. So they're called Yugulnav. Don't forget. Yugulnav. Because Yugulnav is Radha Krishna Pranamoro Yugala Kishora Krishna Prana, more, more, more. <laughs> more means my. <laughs> my. Jeevana Marani Gati are nahi more. And in my life and in my death, there's nothing else is mine. Only Yugo. Yugo and Kishore. This beautiful young couple. Nanda Nanda, son of Nanda Maharaj. And Simati Radhika. Rashobano Nandi. These two, they are the Yugo Kishore, transcendental divine couple. So, in this Hare Krishna Mahamantra, the Yugo divine couple are present eight times. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare, eight times. Next thing. Confidential meaning of this mantra. There are many le uh, levels. So, the initial one is that by chanting this mantra, you will go through eight stages in bhakti. That is, Sadha, Sadhu Sangha, and then practice in Sadhu Sangha, and Anatta Nivriti, the, cle the cleansing of the unwanted desires, attachments, ignorance and so on. That is the next stage. <coughs> then, Nishta, steadiness in Bhakti. Then, Uruchi, taste. Asakti, deep attachment. Then, Bhav, the appearance of transcendental emotion. And then, Brain, in separation and brain in meeting. So these are these eight, it's divided into eight in this way. Then, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was given Shikshastaka. So Shikshastaka means eight teachings. So there are eight verses in Shikshastaka. So, uh, each one of these verses is the description of the consciousness of the devotee in those eight stages. So, the first verse, Chaito Darpanam Arjanam, it is describing seven super excellent results of chanting of the holy name. So that first verse is like the uh, contents page of the rest of the poem. Because one verse is there and it describes seven results and then there's one verse describing in expanding on each of those seven results makes eight. Okay. So, also, these, uh, this Pajanga Hasha, this book, is, has eight chapters. So the first chapter is the explanation of the first verse of Shikshastaka, explanation of the first stage in Bhakti, faith in the name, so the glories of the name are being described, that our faith will be nourished. Then, uh, the second chapter is describing the uh, Sadhu Sangha and Bhajana Kriya Anatta Nivriti. The third chapter, Nishta, then Ruchi, as it like this. So each chapter is one of the stages of brain. 
And that is also one of the stages of Prem, one of the stages, sorry, leading up to Prem. Now, those explanations are for the devotee who is developing. But what about the devotee who has come to the stage of transcendental emotional realization bhav? So for him, there's another meaning of the eight yugal names. And that is that they reveal the Astakaliya Leela of Radha and Krishna. Astakaliya Leela means in 24 hours there are eight time periods. So from uh, 3.36 in the morning until 6 o'clock this is called Nishanta Leela. The end of night. Radha Krishna, after dancing and singing and enjoying pastimes all night, they fall to sleep in a beautiful a pavilion, Nikunjagriha, in the forest. And they are asleep in each other's arms and dreaming about each other. <laughs> <laughs> but now Nisha Anta means the end of night. So very soon the sun will rise. And when the sun will rise, everyone will wake up. The villagers will be moving around in Braja. And they may discover, oh, where is Krishna? Where is Rakika? Or if they they're returning to their homes and they meet them on the road, it will be very problematic. So everyone is still sleeping, but Radha and Krishna they will have to wake up very soon. So Brenda Devi, she wants to wake them up very sweetly. So Tada Gaya Pala Bapushpa Bringa Matvaribi. Brenda Devi is telling the birds, Sukh and Sari, the male and female parrots, to sing, glorifying Radha and Krishna. She's telling the cuckoo birds to sing. And all the various birds are start to wake up and sing in the morning. And they, some parrots, they fly into the branches of the kunj and glorify. Oh, Nanda Nanda, wake up, wake up. Oh, go cool and Radha and Krishna are so sleepy, they hear them, but they pretend not to hear them. <laughs> Brenda Devi tells the cockerel to call. Oh, go and coo in hell. <laughs> she doesn't want to leave Krishna. <laughs> Oh, the parrots, male and female parrots are singing beautifully. And Radha Krishna realized they have to get up, so they sit up, they look at each other, and then embrace and go back to sleep. <laughs> now, Brenda Devi is very worried. What will happen? So then she tells one old female monkey named Kakati. It's, now you do your service. <laughs> And she said, oh, the sun is rising like a ascetic, old ascetic woman. And the rays of the sun are like her jata, her matted locks. But when she, she said, look, the jata, jatila, huh? referring to the poetry describing the rising sun. Then when Radha Krishna hear the word jatila, then that's Radha and his mother-in-law, they become afraid. And suddenly the ocean of rasa shrinks and becomes like a spoonful. And very quickly they get up, come out from the kunj. Lalita Saki offers arti. You know the meaning of arti? Whoever is in this world, when the devotee in Vaidhi Bhakti is worshipping the Supreme Lord, then he's the Supreme Lord, I'm worshipping him. He may have some meditation. He's the god of all the elements. So I'm offering incense, which has fragrance, which is the element of earth, and then fire and water and whatever. Some metaphysical ideas. But 
But actually, in Vedic culture, Arti is offered to someone you love to remove everything inauspicious from their life. So the deeps are waved like this. It means uh, may everything inauspicious be removed from your life and whatever problem might come to you, let it come to me instead. But you should be free and happy. So with love, Melita Saki is offering party and the other Sakis are singing, very beautiful, that it will be aus auspicious, that, they'll, that means they will not get caught on the way home. Then Radha Krishna are so attached to each other, but separation is inevitable. Now they have to go. So this is our Mangal Arctic. Mangala Si Guru Gaura Mangala Urati Mangala Si Radha Krishna Dugala Piriti Kushumita Sarobari Kamalai Lola Radha Krishna, they look at each other, but now they have to separate. Very bittersweet taste of Bhavi Viraha, inevitable, impending separation. So Kusumi Tasarovare Kamala Hilola, in the lakes, the lotus flowers are trembling, and the breeze is blowing, carrying a very sweet fragrance. That means the breeze is carrying the fragrance of the body of Radhika and the body of Krishna mixed together. And the lotus flowers are trembling. Why? Because Radhika is trembling. And her praying, Yavada Shraiti, sorry, that is called Yavada Shraibriti, that the power of her love spreads out and affects everything all around her. So Radhika is trembling and that is making the lotus flowers tremble. And all Sakis are trembling also. And Radha Krishna, they have to go some distance and then separate. You know, just uh, in between Nandagaon and Varasana, there's one village there called Doman. Doman. Do means two. Man means hearts. Two hearts. Because Radha Krishna are going like this, and then Krishna had to go that way, and Radhika had to go that way. So now Radhika, she cannot go with one heart. One heart goes this way and one heart co goes with Krishna Doma. And they quickly sneak into their houses and get in bed and pretend that they were there the whole night. So that is Nishant Lila. 3.36 to 6 o'clock. Then Prata Lila, morning pastimes. Means that uh, Radha Krishna in the Radhika is in Yavat, Krishna is in Nandagaon. Madhya Yashoda comes in to wake up Sri Krishna. And uh, in uh, Yavat, the Mukra, Radhani's grandmother, comes to visit her in the morning. Oh, my granddaughter is still sleeping and the sun has already risen. What happened? Radhika wakes up and in the meantime her maidservants, they are preparing her bathing room and then she goes and they bathe her and decorate her very beautifully. Then she goes to Nandagao to cook in the kitchen of Madhya Shoda. Krishna wakes up, he goes and milks the cows, then comes back, takes bath, then takes breakfast, what Radhika has cooked. And then after a little rest, he leaves with the cows. So then, there is a Purvan Lila. Uh, Krishna leaves with the cows and all bridge bases are standing and seeing Krishna leave. And they feel so much separation. Except for the coward boys who go with him, they are very happy. And the cows. Purvan Lila. Then, 
Nikita goes back to her home, then on the pretext of going to worship the sun god, she leaves from her home and in Mandi then Mandyan Leela comes and she goes to Radha Kund. First to Surya Kund, leaves the puja paraphernalia, then goes to Radha Kund. And then the Mandyan Leela is the longest pastimes. From 10.48 to 3, in the morning to 3.36 in the afternoon. Oh, very long. Mandyan Leela. Midday pastimes in Radha Kund. Then afterwards, Sri Krishna uh, uh, leaves, meets with the coward boys, and there is the uh, evening pastimes. Shayan Leela. Sorry, Aparan Leela. Afternoon pastimes, and Krishna comes back with the cows to the village. Mother Yashodri is standing at the gate of the village with Nanda Maharaj and all the villagers, and they see the dust rising into the air. They hear the sound of the bells of the cows and the flutes of the coward boys and they're looking very eagerly and then gradually through the dust appears Sri Krishna Balaram and all the coward boys Mother Shori standing tears are streaming from her eyes and milk is flowing from her breast and she embraces her son and gives him Abhishek in tears and milk Krishna comes back has his uh, evening meal and then Danishta, one servant in the house of Madhya Shoda, gives some of Krishna's remnant to Rati Manjari. And she takes it to Radharani who is dying in separation in Yavat. And when Radhika gets Krishna's Mahaprasad remnant, then she is floating in the ocean of bliss. Then Chayan Lila, evening pastimes come. In the evening, Krishna goes and there's some entertainment in Nanda Maharaj's uh, court and then everyone goes to take rest and the Prado, in the Pradosh, Pradosh Lila. But when everyone goes to take rest, Krishna is not resting, he's getting ready. Radhika is also getting ready. And they sneak out from the house and they go to meet in the forest on the bank of Jamuna in Brandava. And there is Ratri Lila. Nighttime pastimes. And they dance in Rasalila. They play in the beautiful cooling water of Jamuna. And then they sleep in a very beautiful kunj. And then again the sun is coming. So this is the day is divided into eight parts going around. This is called Astakali Lila. So this is the most confidential meaning of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. The eight Yugal Navs reveal the Astakali Lila of Radha and Krishna. Now, Bhajan Rahasya. Okay, eight chapters. Each chapter is revealing the meaning of one Yugal Nav, describing one stage in Bhakti, describing one verse of Shikshastakam of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all of those meanings are for the devotee who is slowly developing in his sadhana. That is called the Ajata Rati Bhakta. The devotee in whose heart Rati has not come yet. Ajata Rati. And then, at the end of each chapter, there is a small summary, one verse, of the Astakalya Lila, the 24-hour pastimes of Radha and Krishna, that is, for the Jata Rati Sadak, the person who has gone through the stages of practice and the transcendental bhav, ecstatic love entered into his heart and this is how he will chant, remembering in the different portions of the day the pastimes taking place at that time. So don't mix it up. Some part of Bhajan Rahasya is for the Ajata Rati those who have not attained their uh, uh, ecstatic bhav and part is for those who have. So if you have not attained bhav, don't try to imitate the practice of those who have attained bhav. It will not uh, bring an auspicious result. So, Srila Bhakti Thakur, now in this first chapter, come to verse 7, he is describing Adho Sadha, Tata Sadhu Sangato Bhajanakriya, the stages of Bhakti. 
and he will explain how basically the entire structure of Bajan Rahasya that we have been discussing. So you should all commit this to your memory to understand this is not only the structure of Bajan Rahasya, it is the structure of our whole spiritual life. Where we are, where we've been and where we're going, everything is there. It's, ex it's, it's extremely important to observe the current, the, the correct sequence. Otherwise one will not attain perfection. Now, let's see how Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur is explaining the first verse of Shikshastaka and how that relates to the stages of bhakti. Chito darpanam marjanam bhava mahadavagni nirvapanam sayakaiva chandrika vitaranam vidyavatu jivanam anandam buddhivardhanam pratipatam ponam mitasvadhanam sarvatma stampanam param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana. Supreme victory to Sri Krishna Sankirtan. Not Krishna, San Krishna Sankirtan. Sri Krishna. That means Radha Krishna. Sankirtan means chanting and Sam means Sarvato Bhavain Kirtan. A complete practice, a complete spiritual practice. Because it's complete, it's not dependent upon anything else. The kirtan is complete when kirtan is performed, giving up all apparats, offenses. Giving up all anartas, unwanted desires and attachments. When one is chanting, in Sadhu Sangha, in the association of pure saints. And when one is chanting with Sambandha Gyan, very, very important. Sambandha means relation. What is your context? Sambandha Gyan, knowledge of relation, is of two types. Sadharan Sambandha Gyan, ordinary, general, and Vishesh Sambandha Gyan, particular or special. So the general knowledge is Krishna is the Supreme Absolute Truth. He has his internal potency, his spiritual potency which manifests the spiritual world. And he has his external potency which manifests the material world and he has his tatasta shakti his marginal potency it is not of the spiritual world or the material world it isn't the marginal potency in between and from that have come us all the jivas we are souls so the souls they are spiritual They don't belong in the material energy. Their true nature, their true dharma is to serve Krishna in the spiritual energy. But because we are Krishna Bahimuk, indifferent to Krishna's service, this we have become swallowed, enveloped eh, in the material energy. So this is the general Sambandha Gyan, Jivera Swarubhoi, Krishnera Nitya Das, Krishnera Tathasta Shakti, Beira Bait Prakash. The true nature of the soul is that we are all Krishna Das, the servants of Krishna. We have come from his Tathasta Shakti, marginal potency. So Krishna Bhuli Se Jeeva Nadir Bahimuk. Atayeva Maya Tari Sang Saraduk. 
because we have forgotten Krishna. We are Bahimuk. We have turned our attention away from Krishna. Therefore, Maya, the mature energy, has overpowered us and He's giving us so much suffering in the endless chain of birth and death. So, this is Sadharan Sambandhagya. You understand? What am I? Jiva. What is God? Where am I? And what I should be doing? Uh, so, this is the general knowledge. Then, there is Vishesh Sambandhagya. Vishesh means, when your soul attains perfection, what kind of relationship will you have with Krishna? Will you be his friend? Like Subhal Sri Dham, Dham Vasudham, Arjun Labanga Stoga Krishna, Madhu Manga, Vasan Kokyo Benga, and other coward boys? Or will you be love Krishna like a parent, like Madhya Shodo Ananda Maharaj? Or will you love Krishna like Gopi of Vrindavan? Different relationships are possible. So, by the mercy of Guru, when a person takes shelter of the lotus feet of Guru and receives Diksha, initiation, second initiation, Gopal Mantra, then the disciple learns from Gurudev, what is my Vishesh Sambandha, what is my special relation to Krishna. So when we chant the holy name with our heart fixed in that Sambandha Gyan, it is called Sankirtan. Sankirtan, complete kirtan. Very, very powerful. So first, try to be fixed in Sadharan Sambandhagya and chant with that. Then, later, one will uh, gradually become, the impression will come by Sadhu Sangha association and by remembering Gopal Mantra of one's vicious Sambandhagya. And then one should always chant with that relationship. And this will be Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam, Supreme Victory. Just like if there is a war between two kings, then in the battle one king may win. But this is not, this is Jai, victory, but not Vijay. Vijay means the king wins and then he goes to the other king's kingdom and sits on his throne. He gets rid of all of his ministers and puts his minister in charge of everything. Like this. And he's controlling everything now. That is the Param Vijayate, complete victory. So in the same way, Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtana, may this chanting of the Holy Name be completely victorious over my body, mind and senses. Just like when Chaitanya Mahapu went to Kashi, then the Mayavadi impersonalist, Pakashananda Sazwati Thakur, he said, Oh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, you are a sannyasi in our line. So you should be sitting peacefully and doing meditation, Tattvam Asi, Sarvam Kavidam Brahma, everything is Brahma, Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. And you should be studying Vedanta. But what are you doing? Singing and dancing through the streets. <laughs> with the common people. Men, women, children, everyone. Hari Bo, Hari Bo. <laughs> Why are you doing this? <laughs> so then Mahapu explained to him. You know, that uh, when I met my Gurudev, I asked him, Gurudev, can you teach me Vedanta? And Gurudev said, you are a murka. You are a fool. You cannot understand Vedanta. Just understand this. Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam Eva Kivalam, Kalu Nasteva, Nasteva, Nasteva Gatina. In Kali Yuga there is only Hare Nam. And my Gurudev gave me this mantra. And I began to chant. And when I was chanting, I saw a very beautiful young boy with lotus eyes playing a flute beneath a kadamba tree. He was looking at me and his fragrance was so attractive I wanted to run and embrace him. But 
when I ran to embrace him, he disappeared. And it was such a shock to my heart when he disappeared that I fainted. And then when I woke up, I don't know for how long I was unconscious, but I could not stop crying. Sometimes laughing, dancing. So I went back to my Gurudev and said, Kiba mantra diligo sai, kiba tarupa, jabi de jabi te mantra kaile paga. Gurudev, what kind of mantra have you given me? I was chanting it again and again and now I think I've become Pago. Crazy. But my Gurudev said, no, no. Krishna Nama Mahamanta, Eto Subhav, Jai Japi, Tari Krishna Upajai Bhav. It's the nature of this Hare Krishna mantra that when you chant it, love rises up in your heart. Evam Brata Swapri Nama Kira Jaja Tano Rago Dhuta Chitta Utschai Asasati Rota Dirati Gayatam Madhavan Mirita Diloka Bhaya. When your heart melts, then that person, they are singing, dancing, crying, running around. They don't care what anyone thinks. So your life is successful. Now go everywhere and uh, tell everyone to chant the holy names also. So Mahaprabhu said to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to Prakashananda, you are asking why am I singing and dancing? Then I tell you, I am not singing and dancing. This name makes me sing. This name makes me dance. That is Nam Prabhu. In the form of Aprakrita Pran, Supernatural Pran has taken over everything. And I am helpless. Vivash. Vivash means I have no control. Nam is doing everything. Payura says Thiri Spura Tupavanali Kalanaya Muhu Brindaranya Smarana Pranta Prima Vivasha Kvachit Krishna Vriti Prachala Rasano Bhakti Rasika Sachitanya Kimmei Punara Priti Surya Shatipadam Rupaka Swami said, Oh, Mahaprabhu used to wander in the gardens on the shore of the ocean in Jagannath Puri. And seeing the gardens, he was reminded of Vrindavan and became Prim Bivosh. No control, out of control. And the name was dancing on his tongue. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. When will I see that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again? Mahaprabhu is crying. Ahamura Pranodama full of compassion. Ah! Divya Sadguna Saga. Oh Krishna, where is my beloved who is like an ocean of all divine qualities? Aha! Sham Sundar. Oh my Krishna who is like a fresh rain cloud. Very beautiful complexion. Aha! Pitam Baradara. Where is my Krishna who is Pitambara Dhara? Taking his Pitambara, his yellow cloth around his neck like this and coming to me. Oh, I am sorry, please forgive me. <laughs> I made a mistake. I should not have abandoned you in the forest at night. Aha Pitambara Dhara. Aha. Rasa Vila Sanagar. Where is my Nagar? Where is my... Hero, my beloved of the Rasalila. So Mahaprabhu became mad like this, always crying and feeling intense separation in the mood of Radhika. 
that is Paralijayate Ishi Krishna Sankirtanam, the complete victory of the Holy Name. That's why we're chanting. Why are we chanting? Hmm? Some people are chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, I'm suffering so much, Krishna, please. <laughs> I don't have enough money. <laughs> Oh Krishna, I want a boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> I'm very sad. Uh, no, not for this. Why? Param Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankir. For this, like Mahaprabhu, Nam should come and take over everything and become mad in love for Krishna. <clears throat> so, there are stages leading to that. And it begins here. Jaito Darpanam Arjanam. Seven stages are being described in this one verse. Chaito <clears throat> The chanting of the holy name, first installment of Nam Prabhu's mercy. It cleans the mirror of the heart. What does that mean? I want you all to understand it very, very precisely. Chaito Dharpana Marjanam. <coughs> Our physical body is made of the five gross elements earth, water, fire, and fire of digestion, air, and ether, some space. And that ether is accommodating the outer elements, Bhutanam Chittada Dhritvam, Bahir Antara Evacha Pranindriya Pradhisyatnam Naso Nabaso Briti Lakshanam. That Akash, that ether, is accommodating the outer elements, but the Akash is accommodating also the inner elements. So the inner elements, that means the Pran. The indriya, the senses, and the subtle body, your astral body, that has four parts. Mind, intelligence, manas, buddhi, ahankar, ego, and last one is called chitta. Now, all of these elements, the chitta is the most subtle. And everything else is just a condensation of that. Just like uh, water vapor, like a gas in the air, then it becomes like a cloud, then it becomes water, rain, and then it can become ice, snow. So it's the same thing. So in the same way, everything is Prakriti, Krishna's material energy, Prakriti, nature. But it starts off, Prakriti is just potential, having no qualities. And then, and in Prakriti, the three gunas, Sattva, Rajas and Tamas are in equilibrium. So there's no creation at all. But when the Supreme Lord, by His glance, that is the time, the Kriya Shakti breaks the equilibrium of the potential energy. Then the first element that comes out is very sattvic, very luminous, bright, light, fine, responsive. It is called the Mahatattva, the Mahat in the universe. And that portion of the Mahatat which is in your subtle body is called Chitta. It is Niskriya. It has no activity because it's very, very highly sattvic. When rajas appears in it, then it condenses and then there's movement. And the first movement of rajas in the condensed chitta is called what? Sutra tattva. It is the Mukya Pranyas. Sutra tattva. And that is the original pran. The first movement of Kriya Shakti potency of action in this world. And when the Kriya Shakti moves and it solidifies and becomes more of a fixed shape, then that element is called Ahankar, ego. 
So our ego is made of thousands and thousands, countless impressions of past life's activities are all stored there. The chitta is there and the portion of the chitta which has become hardened, solidified, condensed, grossification and is now fixed in a shape. Those, uh, that collection of sanskars is called ahankar ego. So ego is called vasanamai ahankar. Vasanamai. It is made of impressions. So this is, uh, this is our subtle body. One portion of the ego which is a little more sattvic than the rest becomes mind, manas, which is accepting and rejecting. And one portion which is more rajasic is the buddhi, intelligence. So in this way we have manas, mind, buddhi, intelligence, ahankar, ego, and then the substrate of everything is the chitta. So chitta is very highly sattvic, then the ego, intelligence and mind, these are different st stages of contaminated chitta. So when Mahaprabhu is saying, Chaito Darpana Mahajana, the chanting of the holy name cleans the chitta, it means that this gradual grossification or degradation of chitta which has produced the ego and the intelligence of the mind is being reversed. Those evolutes are dissolving back into their substrate. So, then the material mind, material intelligence, material ego is dissolved. See, Kapil Dev said, just as if a person takes food, they don't think about it, but it's digested automatically. And you don't have to calculate. Uh, here comes the protein, release these enzymes. <laughs> now the carbs are coming, release another enzyme. You don't have to think about it consciously. But the di fire of digestion goes on by itself and the food is digested. So in the same way, for a person engaged in bhakti yoga, especially chanting the holy name, they don't have to think how it goes on, but automatically by the power of bhakti, the subtle body is digested. So, the mind is the cause of our bondage in this world and the cause of our liberation. If in our mind we can receive good instructions from Guru and pure Vaishnavas and we think, oh, I should follow this. And we follow the teachings of pure Bhakti. Then the subtle body will be dissolved and then the Atma will become free from worldly identification. You become Jivan Mukta, a liberated soul. So, Chaito Darpanam Marjanam. Mahaprabhu, we've explained the word Chitta, we've explained the word Marjanam. How chanting cleans? Why? Because the chanting is the resolving the evolutes of Prakriti into their substrate, and so the subtle body is dissolving, leaving a clean, purified Chitta. The impressions are being eradicated, which are driving us in this material world, they're being cleansed away. So we've explained marjanam. Now darpana. Darpana means mirror. A mirror is a very wonderful analogy here, because if the mirror has dust, you cannot see yourself, but if you clean it, you can see your reflection. So the chitta has some qualities. That is, the Swachatvam, Avikaritvam, Shantatvam, Iti Chaitasa. Lord Kapil Dev in the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, he said, the first quality of the Chitta is Swachatva. Clarity, purity. Avikaritvam, Chitta has no modification, vikar, transformation, distortion. 
If you look in water that's moving, then you cannot see your reflection. It has to be still to catch a reflection. So moving is called vikar, transformation. So when the chitta is clean, it's avikaritva, no transformation. That also means live shape rohit. There's no sleepiness and no distraction. You see, when you're chanting, you may notice sometimes you feel sleepy and sometimes your mind is wandering. So that's called lion fiction. The uh, inertia and hyperactivity. Distraction. So that's all the symptoms of contaminated chitta. But by chanting, surrendering to Nam Prabhu, then this will go away and chitta becomes pure. Avikaritvam, shantatvam, peaceful. That means when the chitta is clean, then there's no rag attachment. You can tell when you're chanting, whatever comes in your mind, that's what you're attached to. Whatever you're attached to, your mind runs there. So you're trying to remember Krishna, but you think of something else, why attachment is there. If your attachment is for Krishna, it will go there. So, satatvam avikaritvam, santatvam iti chetasa. Coming back to the word swachatvam, clarity, purity. All the Acharyas, Sridha Swami, Jiva Goswami, Vishwantaka Thakur, they have explained that Swachatvam means Bhagavad Bimba Grahitam, the power to catch the reflection of Bhagavan. So when the, our chitta, our subconscious mind, the substrate of our astral body has become steady and clean, it's now like a mirror and reflected there, we can see. Oh. Krishna Dara Sanaja Bhagavaya Chie Koba Vikasi Arindayan Kare Krishna Darsha Chari Jeeva Chite Rabika Srila Bhakti Nautaka, what he said? Janama Safalata, your life will be successful. Where? Krishna Dara Sanaja. When you see Krishna, You'll be very fortunate if you can see Krishna just once. When you see him, your heart will ah, expand. And your eyes also will blossom. And your chitta will become nirvika. Stunned. No other thought there, only absorbed in Krishna. So, Mahapu is saying the first uh, wonderful result of Sri Krishna Sankirtanam is Chaito Darpana Marjana. So, if a devotee has Sadhu Sangha, they have a bona fide guru, they are serving with body, mind, and words, with faith, with loyalty. And they chant the holy name with Sambandha Gyan, understanding the general relation and specific relations, at least general relation even, then the, the mirror of the heart will start to be cleansed. The subtle body will start to dissolve. And then what will happen? And that corresponds to the second verse of Shikshastika. Yeah, then, now the second part of this first line, Bhava Mahadavadni Nirvapanam, refers to the third verse, means that the chanting of the holy name extinguishes the forest fire of material existence. Amazing. <laughs> Who is struggling a little bit in life? Raise your hand if you are struggling. <laughs> so yes, the material world 
is a, a place where there are problems. How many? <laughs> Unlimited. Like waves in the ocean. Uh, a wave comes, but behind that wave, you know, another wave is coming, another wave, and it's forever. So the material world is like that. Problem after problem after problem. And people are trying to solve their problems. They think we are foolish. Because we just had Hare Krishna. But what about all the problems in the world? <coughs> <coughs> there are so many problems. Social problems, political problems. So we have to solve these problems. No, they are crazy. <laughs> Even if they solve one problem, behind that is another one and another one and another one forever. But the root of all those problems, what is the root cause, is their own ignorance. On, like we were saying earlier, Krishna said to Arjun, on this battlefield you have no enemy. There's one enemy, your own ignorance, avidya. So, we have to deal with that. So, when a person's heart is cleansed by chanting the holy name, then ignorance goes away. And then, Atmoni Vedana Tuya Pade Kori Vainu Karama Sukhi Dukha Dure Kero Oh my Lord, since I surrendered my soul to you, I have become completely happy. All of my worries have gone far away. And in all four directions I look, I see only happiness, only joy. Huh? Can you imagine it? Out of illusion. We think that we have so many problems. Just like a person drowning in the ocean. They're screaming, help, 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 help. And then someone quickly grabs them and throws them onto the ship. But they're on the deck of the ship, help, help, help. help. Hey, uh, calm down. It's okay. So we are like this. You have come to Bhakti. You have come to Krishna's lotus feet. You have come to the shelter of Gurudev. Why are you kicking and screaming? Jeev jago, jeev jago, gaura chandra gore. Mahabu said, wake up. Sleeping soul. Oma jnana timarandasya. When Gurudev opens our eyes with knowledge, then we'll see hmm? only Krishna everywhere and in the heart of everyone. Hmm? Even mainly the person you don't see, just Krishna. Yo mam pasyati sarvata sarvam chamai pasyati tasyam na prasyam isa chamena pranasati. Sixth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, One who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost to him and he is never lost to me. So we have Dvitya Abhinivesh. We think that there is something other than Krishna in existence. And so we are afraid. And when the chitta is cleansed, then we look and say, Ah, only my friend everywhere. No problem at all. But to have such a vision, the heart has to become clean first. Because we cannot see like that, because we have desires. If we have the desire to lord over everything, to enjoy everything, how will we see the Lord everywhere? If we think I am the Lord, I am great and everything is for my enjoyment. How will you realize that my Lord is everywhere and I am for His enjoyment? <laughs> huh? It's completely reverse vision. Huh? So first the chitta has to become cleansed and then then the eyes are open. 
When the eyes are open, Baba Mahadavag Nene Rapana, I am not in the forest fire. Everything is good. Okay. This is a true vision. You have to know, nothing bad ever happened in the past, the present, and nothing bad will happen in the future. Hmm? Someone's whispering, I can hear them. <laughs> I can hear your mind whispering. What do you mean? Nothing bad ever happened. <laughs> Don't listen to your mind. Listen to Shabda Brahma. Transcendental sound of Shastra coming in Guru Parampara. Don't follow your mind. Follow Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. Then you can get the actual impression of reality. Baba Mahadavagni Nirvapanam It is described It is a stage of Nishta Steadiness Stage of Nishta Because now the mind is become Nirvikara Not oscillating And It is uh, described by Mahaprabhu in Shikshastakam Tanada Bhi Sunitsena Tarodi Vasa Shunamani Namana Dena Kirtanya Sadahari one can chant continuously, being very, very humble. That humility is natural. Krishna is everywhere, I am nothing. Uttamayapanaki manitranadham Jeeva isavandhi bejani krishna distan Mahapu said, though the devotees very elevated. He thinks himself more insignificant than a blade of grass. And he gives respect to everyone, seeing Krishna everywhere, in the heart of everyone. So then the next stage comes, Shreya Kairi Vachandra Kapitaranam. So the next stage is a stage of Nishta steadiness, then Ruchi comes. Ruchi means taste. So, in the stage of Nishta, you can begin to see Krishna's form, the abhas, the reflection of his form in your heart. In the stage of Nishta, and his qualities, some not sweet, more opulent qualities. Because now the pap, your sins are destroyed, but there's still some pap beach. Some seeds, impressions are there, but as you go on hearing and chanting with steadiness, then Papa Beach Nashat Amadur Anubhavaha. Ruchi means the taste that comes by realizing the sweetness of Krishna upon the destruction of the Papa Beach, the seeds of sin, some fine impressions in the heart of materialistic experience that is destroyed and now the mind, the jitta becomes cleansed enough to accommodate Krishna's madhurya, sweetness. So that is called ruchi. Understand? What is ruchi? Ruchi means taste. To taste, you have to taste something. Hmm? So it's the taste of Krishna's madhurya, Krishna's sweetness. So here, Sraya Kareva Chandrika a very beautiful example is given. Just as when the moon rises, then the rays of the moon touch the night blooming lotus and cause it to open. So, in this stage of Ruchi, not actual Bhav, not actual Shuddhana, but the rays coming from Shuddhana are touching the heart and reflecting there and the heart is expanding like a lotus. Very beautiful. Some sweetness, realization of Krishna's sweetness is there. Now, Vidyavadu Jivanam, the next stage, it is said that the chanting of the holy name is Jivanam, the life and soul of Vidyavadu. A 
Vadu means a bride, a newly married bride of Vidya knowledge. Just as a newly married bride is completely chaste to her husband, she never serves anyone else. So similarly, Vidya, transcendental knowledge, is only serving Sankirtana. Very chaste. She never goes anywhere else. The Karmis, Jnanis and Yogis, they never get pure knowledge. Only those who do Bhakti get pure knowledge. Because the, the Goddess of Knowledge is devoted to Krishna Nam. So Vidya Vadu Jivanam. Here also Vidya Vadu also means Paravidya. Supreme transcendental knowledge that is the highest knowledge is the knowledge how to please Krishna. So who has that knowledge? Simati Radharani. So she is the Vidya Vadu. She is the young bride who knows how to please Krishna. No one can please Krishna if Radhika is not there. Shat koti kopi madavahumar rakitai narilo kari jutha They cannot uh, uh, attract his mind in any way. He, can, he doesn't even see them. He looks through them. He's only thinking, where is Radhika? So Krishna got up and left and began to play his flute and call Radhika, but she did not come. So he was crying. Oh Radhika, please give me your darshan and save my life. So who knows how to please Krishna? Radhika. So Vidya Vadhu Jivanam. This Harinam is the life of Radhika. Keva Shunailo Shamana Sakhi. Keva Shunailo Shamana. Radhika said, Oh, how much nectar is in the name of Krishna? Sham, Sham, Sham. My tongue won't leave it alone. Sham, Sham, Sham. When I utter this name, Sham, 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 then all my pran, everything is completely disturbed. What will happen if I actually, if you will come and touch me, what will happen to me? I don't know. So, Radhika is the Vidyavad Hujivanam. Now, the secret, the Bhajan Rahasya here is that when the devotee in the stage of Ruchi is chanting, he begins to realize Krishna's sweetness and also Parikar associates. 
And among those associates, he realizes Radhika and then takes shelter. He does Radha Pad Ashray. Oh Radhika, I don't want anything else. I only want your service. I don't want to be like your Sakis, Lalit and Vishaka. I bow down to them again and again. But I only want to experience the nectar of your service. So, in the stage of Asakti, the devotee takes complete shelter of the lotus feet of Radhika. And in that stage, then the Abhas of his own Swarup appears. So, you don't have to speculate anything. You don't have to imagine. You don't have to, like, play Dungeons and Dragons. Project yourself into the fantasy world. Huh? No. Take shelter of Krishna Nam. Gradually, gradually, as the heart is purified. In that state, when one realizes Krishna and his associates, and you take shelter of Radhika, then your Swarup, the Abbas of your Swarup, will manifest. And then the Asakti, the attachment is very deep. Hmm? Bhaktiswarva Pramahite Kari Akarshan Divya Deya Deya Kari Nirmala Bhajan Chaitanya Mahapu told Sanatan Goswami Bhakti Raswabhav, it is the nature of Bhakti. Divya Deya Deya, that it gives you your spiritual body. And then one can engage Nirmal Bhajan in pure immaculate Bhajan. So, Bhakti Bali Prapta Swarup Divya Deya Pai Krishna Guna Kristi Haya Kari Krishna Pai Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said Bhakti Bali by the power of Bhakti Prapta Swarup Divya Deya Pai you attain your Swarup so no one can give you a Swarup you cannot go to the Swarupa market and buy a Swarup if any, Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta Sotaku says, if anyone says they can give you a Swaru, they are lying. It's not possible. Only Bhakta Bala Prapta Swaru Divya Deya Pai, Mahaprabhu's own words, by the power of Bhakti, when one is advanced in Bhakti, then Bhakti Devi herself, through the power of Bhakti Devi, one attains his Swaru. And when the Swaru comes, then Krishna Guna Kristi Haya Kari Krishna Pai, then one becomes very attracted to the qualities of Krishna. Why? Because your spiritual eyes see the spiritual form of Krishna. Your spiritual senses, all spiritual senses are awake now and they are spontaneously attracted to Krishna because this spiritual body is not separate at all from the Advaya Gyan Tattva. Actually, nothing is separate from Advaya Gyan Tattva. But in that stage, we realize how Krishna, he has his own Swarup, spiritual form, and from his Swarup comes Swarup Shakti, his spiritual potency. And that spiritual potency manifests his Dham and all of his associates. And one of those spiritual bodies of the associates is yours. Hmm? And you realize that you are part of that indivisible, non-dual, transcendental reality. So how can a person whose mind is in duality realize a Swarup? Swarup is part of the Advaya Gyan Tattva unless we become free from Dwai, duality. And our consciousness becomes Advai, the non-dual. How we realize our Swarup which is part of that non-dual reality? So the material mind cannot imagine it. It has to be an internal experience. Bhakta Bali Prakta Swarup Divya Deya Pai. Krishna Guna Krishna Haya Kare Krishna. So, that is the stage with Vidyavadu Jivanam. It corresponds to Asakti. And in uh, Shikshastakam, it is explained in which verse? Ainanda Tanuja Kinkaram Patitama. Everyone.
everyone should learn Shikshastaka. It's very important. Mahaprabhu is very merciful. You know, Krishna came, spoke Bhagavad Gita, 700 verses. Mahaprabhu just gave 8 verses. So, he is very merciful. Try to learn there. Everything is there. Yeah? In Shikshastaka. So, Ainandatanu Jakinkaram. That is... Uh, Corresponds to Asakti and the Divadu Jivam. Now the next stage. Anandam Bhutivardhanam. Already in Bhakti you will be experiencing bliss. But when the stage of Bhav comes, Anandam Bhutivardhanam, that bliss becomes like an ocean. A huge ocean. And devotee becomes lost in that. So, what is Bhav? The stage of Bhav. Rupa Goswami has defined it. Shuddha Sattva Vishesha Atma Prima Suryangsu Samyapak Ruchibis Chitamasinya Krid Aso Bhav Ujate. Oh, can you explain it? Yes, please, the stack of it. Just outline of the Omajanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Nena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Narayana Parayana Jidahankara Nashana Rupano Gambhita Prama Prajanati Namaha Pancha Kalpata Rubyas Chakripa Sindho Peva Chapatita Nam Pavanebhyo Vaishnambhyo Namo Namaha So Shri Gurudev ordered me to speak on this verse on uh, Bhava Bhakti, uh, which is from uh, Sharupa Goswami, Bhakti Rasamitra Goswami. Shuddha Sattva Vishay Sattma, Prema Suram Sasana Bhakti Rushi Vishchitta Mashinda Ked Asur Bhava Kuchate. Which means, uh, Shuddha Sattva means uh, not uh, Sattva Guna, which is from the free Guna, but it means Vishuddha Sattva, which is near Guna, which is beyond the free Guna, which is material world, Sattva Rajas and Tamas. So means it is the transcendental energy of the Supreme Lord, the Swarupa Shakti, Shri Krishna, which is the internal energy, the internal potency of Shri Krishna, which is not different from the self. And it, it comes into the heart of the devotee, the surrender devotee, which has become Kriti B, which has become purified by surrendering to Shri Guru, receiving Diksha and practicing with a sincere mood and to become purified. And then Kriti B, Shushu Vistat Shanat. There and then, when he hears Shrimad Bhagavatam, when he is chanting the holy name of Sadhu Sangha, he can see the supreme form of Shri Krishna manifesting in his heart. No? Because this uh, transcendental energy, which is Vishuddha Sattva, has come and melt his heart. No? Ruchiris Chitta means that his heart now is start to melt. Not completely, because it will be the next stage of Prema, the complete melting of the heart, but at the beginning of the melting, it is there starting. Uh, Bhav Bhakti, the stage of Bhav, no? And, the, and the, this stage of Bhav is actually the uh, goal of sadhana, of sadhana Bhakti, of our practices. Our practice is not just to practice the rules and regulations, but to obtain this pure love for God, the pure love for Shri Krishna, which is the amazing So, Shuddha Sattva, Vishay Sattma. Vishishatma means that this uh, uh, energy that is coming is actually transcendental, it is uh, the Sambit Shakti and this Sambit Shakti, it is actually uh, have the, the power to manifest in our heart the form of Krishna. This is the, the particular power that has this, this energy to manifest uh, this uh, power, to manifest the form of Krishna. No? Because there is the Ladini Sarbriti and then the, the Ladini Sarbriti is the part of the pleasure potency which is the Atusati Devata, is the Shumati Radhika and then there is also the Chit part which is the Sambit, which is Shri Krishna and with this energy when touch the heart it has the power to manifest the form of Shri Krishna into the heart of the devotee. So, Shuddha Sattva Vishay Satma Prema Surya Amshasana Bhak means that this uh, uh, Prema is like the sun and you see in the mo early morning when the sun is rising first, before the sun rises 
the night start to go away because few rays start to come in and the darkness go away and the stars are also going away slowly slowly so it means that the darkness of our material existence which is full of stars which is full of material desires when uh, even before the prema comes when this stage of bulk comes these rays already start to dissipate all the darkness and the material desires and then in the next stage the prema will rise up as the sun so you know now i am in the stage of love next very soon the sun of prema will arise and will touch my heart and the life will be completely successful you know the world will be completely joyful should the sato you should have a prema so i'm saying about ruchi bis chitta means if the chitta ruchi bis chitta means it will start to the chitta start to melt masrinya masrinya means melting sacred asa baba uchate and this is how it is which other means it is called about this stage it is called about this how it goes on of course it is a very deep explanation but it's just few words to the So it is not a material thing it is not a material emotion Shuddha sattva here means samvit sar vritti the essential function of Krishna's samvit shakti cognizance potency the potency that makes Krishna aware and that makes his devotees aware that reveals all spiritual objects Krishna and everything else so it is the awareness that which gives awareness excuse me and that is called shuddha sattva visheshatma he refers to hadini sarvriti that is the uh, pleasure potency hmm? hadini shakti of the supreme lord so bhav is a combination of these two samvit and hadini consciousness and bliss jid and ananda so shuddha sattva visheshatma prem this is the constitution of prem samvita nadini is prem and prem is like the sun the sun is in the sky so you are not on the sun planet you are here so you cannot touch that but a ray can come so bhav is not yet prem but a ray of prem is coming and touching the heart and the heart is melting masanya so prema surya angsu angsu means a ray so this bhav is like a ray coming from the sunlight of prema masanya melts the heart ruchi bis chitta the heart is melted ruchi bi that means by tastes three different types of taste they are called bhagavat prapt abilas bhagavat anukul abilas and sohard abilas three types of aspiration longing intense desire the first one bhagavat prapt abilas the desire to attain krishna oh krishna where are you where are you the heart is melting i have to attain krishna then anukul abilas when i attain krishna i want to serve him in a very favorable way what's the most favorable way which is most pleasing to him not i do for krishna what i want to do i do what i want to do and i offer it to krishna this is not service service means what is the does krishna want i'll do that and then sohard abilas means to have surid bhav intimate friendship where you are overwhelmed with the 
desire, the abilas, the desire for Krishna's happiness. That you sincerely are his well-wisher. Can you imagine? In ordinary religion, think of God's doing fine. God's got it made, he doesn't need anything. But uh, not so much myself. So everyone is praying to God, you give me. God's, you're fine, you don't need anything. But I need some stuff. <laughs> so they pray to God. But when Bhav comes, then the devotee has so hard Abhilas. He's the well wisher. Hmm? Can you imagine? Just like in Vrindavan. The bridge passes, they did Govardhan Puja. They worshipped Govardhan and Govardhan manifested their huge form. And he took all the offerings. Then he said to the bridge passes, I am very satisfied. I'll give you a benediction, anything you want. And all the bridge passes, they, they thought, oh, they don't want anything. Yeah? They have brain, they don't want anything. So then they said to Giraj, oh, just give us this benediction. That the son of Nanda Maharaj will be happy. <laughs> they just want Krishna to be happy. Heart is filled with that well wishing to build the well wisher of Krishna. Hmm? Krishna should not be too hot, too cold. Is Krishna tired from walking in the forest? Then give him massage his feet. Hmm? Is he hot? Thank you. Give him massage with chanda. Hmm? Is he feeling separation from Radharani? Oh, we have to arrange a meeting. Like that. Always the heart is overflowing, well wishing for Krishna. So, in the stage of Bhav, these three types of ruchi, three types of taste, which are three types of longing, desires, to attain Krishna, to serve Him favorably, and to always to wish Him well, to want what is the best for Him. That is always there in the heart. Nothing else is there. The heart is melting with that. So that is the stage of Bhav. Ananda Buddhivardana. That's so wonderful. And Krishna is like that because Krishna reciprocates with his devotees. So Krishna only wants, he is full of desire. I want to meet my devotee, I want to serve my devotee. And he's the well wisher of his devotee. So when there is love like this between Krishna and his devotee, this is a bhava bandana. The rope of love that ties the two together. So, anandam buddhivardhanam. Very important here. In the stage of bhav, the heart is melted with three types of ruchi. So, this ruchi is there in ruchi. The stage of ruchi. These desires are coming, understand? In the stage of ruchi. But in the stage of bhav, they are so intense that the heart is melting. Understand? So in the stage of ruchi, there is... Uh, we mentioned before, Mukunda Goswami says, Papa Beach Nashad, Madhuri Anubhava. Ruchi is the destruction, by the destruction of the seeds of sin, there is the realization of Krishna's sweetness. But Vishnu Chakutako says, Ruchi Abhilasaha. Ruchi means Abhilas. It's coming, but not so intense. Like in the stage of Bhav, where the heart is melted with this. Now, consider this very important point. What's the difference between the stage of Ruchi and Asakti? In Ruchi, the Abhilas is there, but it's Buddhi Paravaka. That means your volition, your intelligence, your um, own uh, activity is involved in the manifestation of that Abhilas. Uh, it is not that the Abhilas itself is a generated a material emotion, but it means that the devotee, he will take Japa Mala and chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and then he may recite a verse. Oh, 
न धनम न जनम न सुंदरम कविडंबा जगदीश कामे मम जन्म नि जन्म नि श्री बाबतत भक्ति होय माय लॉर्ड आई डोंट वांट एनी फॉलोअर्स or uh, great learning or wealth or anything i only want that spontaneous love will awaken in my heart at every moment so he prays to the lord and when he prays like that buddhi purvaka deliberately with volition he's praying then what happens then that ruchi starts to appear you see but it's not natural he has to pray the intelligence the effort comes first and then some ruchi is there starts to come but in the stage of asakti the ruchi is not buddhi purvaka coming from volition but it is swarasiki that is natural said natural and in the stage of bhav those abilas those desires become so intense that the heart melts so these are the difference between ruchi asakti and bhav now look at what mahapu is saying in the verse na danam na janam na sundari He is saying, "Bhavatad bhakti ahoy tukito." I want this causeless devotion to awaken in my heart at every moment. What does it mean? It means that in that stage of ruchi, the devotee has experienced the causeless mm, desires, devotional desires, but they don't come at every moment because it's buddhi purvak. Understand? You see, so every word of Shikshastakam is exactly. precisely scientifically describing the internal psychological state of that stage hmm? you see so because he's buddhi purvaka he is praying and then the feeling comes and then it goes then he may pray again but he wants the that spontaneous desires of service for krishna it will be at every moment so mama janma ni janma rishre bhavata bhakti ahoy to ki tvai then with the ananda bodhi vardanam ah the stage of bhav we want to say a little more about this shuddha sattva visheshatva someone may say that if this bhav comes by practicing sadhan it must be a material thing so shuddha sattva visheshatva means no 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 this is not something of this world just as the supreme lord comes in this world in his avatars sometimes lord ram sita ram lakshman hanuman lord ram all his associates they descend they appear manifest in this world and then they become unmanifest again so in the same way the supreme lord and his associates and everything are transcendental so in the same way this love is not of this world it's of the transcendental world it exists eternally in the hearts of the nitya siddhas the eternal associates of krishna there the sun of love is shining and from the hearts of those eternal associates like rupa mandri rati mandri then a ray comes to us so it is transcendental so rupa goswami says अभी Oh, every thought that you have, every emotion, every image is a movement of pran in your chitta. So now, by chanting Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama,
Oh yes, that mountain snow on the top. Sunlight shining one side. Imagine a nice mountain. I just came from Switzerland. <laughs> so, so you can bring the image in, but you cannot bring into your mind something that you've never experienced. Impossible. But when you are absorbed in Sankirtanam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare. Then that vibration of the holy name takes over your pran. And it, it makes its appearance. Avir Bhuya Mano Brito. That means the divine energy does Avir Bhav in your Mano Briti. It appears in the movement of pran in your mind. And now it begins to show you things that you've never seen before, such as Kaloka Vrindavan, Madhya Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, uh, Transcendental Jamuna River, Kalpa Vriksha trees, hmm? the Surabi cows, wish fulfilling cows, Chintamani jewels everywhere in Vrindavan, so beautiful. And Krishna and his pastor. What you have not seen, now you can see. Because Nam is manifest. So, Swayam Prakash. It is self-manifesting. Basamana Prakashyavat. But it appears to be like a, a thought. Just like a thought comes in your mind and your soul is illuminating it. It, it appears like that at first. But actually, it's the spiritual energy self-manifesting in your mind. So... That is Anandam Bodhi Vardhanam. You have darshan, like Sila Bhakti Nautaku said. Teki te, teki te, bhuli bhopa kave, nijashtula pari chah. When will that day come? I am chanting the holy names. And suddenly, I lose awareness. I completely, I forget my worldly identification of the body, gross body and subtle body. Everything forgot. And before my eyes, I see now the Swarup Shakti is manifesting. The Nitya Chidananda Moi, Brajapura Shabha, the beauty of Braja. Nanda Gaon, so beautiful. So many Brahmanas are chanting mantras. Beautiful cows with golden horns and silver hooves and bells. Humba Humba. They are moving. So many coward boys. People are calling, hey, bring the bucket of milk. People are shouting, calling. Some are singing the names of Krishna, it's very noisy. That's why it's called Gosh. 
Uh, it is the the uh, the place of the coward uh, uh, people. It's called Gosh. It's full of noise, very lively, like a festival. When will I see? It? When will I? Brishabhanu Pure take birth in Varsana, the town of Brishabhanu Maharaj, and then. When I come to, I start to become a bit mature, my marriage will be arranged and I'll move and have to live in Yavat. Brajagopi Bhav Hoi Bhav, I'll have no nature of this world. I'll have the nature of a very beautiful coward girl. Nijo Siddha Deha, Nijo Siddha Naam. By the power of Bhakti, I will have my spiritual form, my spiritual name, my cloth, that means Radran is Prasadi. By serving Radhika, she becomes very pleased and said, Oh, Saki, give her one of my veils, like this. So gradually by serving Radhika, you can collect one day veil, one day skirt, one day a bracelet, one day necklace. <laughs> then you can be all decorated in Radharani's Prasadi ornaments. Nija Rupa Swabhasana when will the Jamuna Shalela Ahar Nadia? One day I will go to the Jamuna to collect some water. And as I am going there, Pagali Prema Mugdahoi, completely bewildered in love, Pagalini Prai, like a mad girl, I will sing the glories of Radhika on the top of my voice. Radhe 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 Jai 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 Then the next step, Pratipadam Purnamrita Svadhana. One begins to serve in, in the stage of Bhav, one is now serving in Astakalya Lila, 24 hours a day. And internally, and praying is coming, but there's so much separation, a very intense separation. And there's nectar Pratipadam means in every syllable of the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, is a Purna Amrita Ashwadan. There's a full taste of transcendental nectar. Then Sarvatna Snapanam Param, Prem in meeting. Sarvatna, the word Atma has so many meanings. Atma means body. Atma means soul. Atma means mind, manas. Atma means buddhi, intelligence. Atma means driti, determination. Atma means yatna, endeavor. So all of the, every aspect of us becomes completely transcendentalized. Sarvat Param, Param Vijayate, Sri Krishna Sankirtana. And that is the complete perfection and victory for the Holy Name. So today, I just wanted to give you the impression of the overall structure of Bhajan Rahasya, how it's related to the seven um, divine results of chanting the Holy Name mentioned in the first verse of Shikshastaka, how it's related to each of the eight verses of Shikshastaka, how it's related to eight stages of Bhakti, and how for the devotee who already attained Bhav, it is related to the eight uh, pastimes of Radha Krishna in the eight portions of the day, 24 hours a day. So is that clear? Yes? So impress that in your mind fully. If it's not so clear for you, then you can uh, go pick here and Brenda Dasi. They have this. You can come and take a snap of it on your smartphone or whatever and keep it with you. And you can see uh, the entire structure of Bhajan Rahasya and how it's related to all of these things. So from uh, tomorrow morning, we'll uh, try to complete the first chapter and the second chapter tomorrow morning. And then the next day, another couple of chapters, we'll try to just touch. We cannot 
go deeply into the whole Vajan Rahasya, but at least in four days we want to touch uh, uh, two chapters or so in each class so that we can complete the overview of Vajan Rahasya during this festival.